Hey guys, what's up? It's me, the Cubing Bear, and today we're going to be learning how to solve the 8x8 Rubik's Cube. So before we go on to solving the 8x8 Rubik's Cube, I want to say one more time, please, please take a look at any other tutorials before going to this. I recommend that you guys learn how to solve the 3x3, 4x4, and 5x5. Um, if you guys would like to solve the 6x6 and 7x7 to check out some other algorithms for bigger cubes, that would be great as well, especially when you're doing contouring for the last two centers, but we'll get through that in this video also. Uh, one thing that you want to note is that this is an even layered puzzle, so therefore it is going to be essential that you have a standard Rubik's Cube or an odd layer puzzle with you, that way that you understand how this color scheme can work. But other than that, we're gonna go ahead and get started with the tutorial right now by scrambling up the eight by eight. Okay, so that looks pretty good for a uh, scramble. So right now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are going to start off with our black side. If you have a sticker, regular black plastic puzzle, we would start on the white side, or if it's stickerless, they would also start on the white side. But since it's a white colored puzzle, um, we're gonna be using the black side. So the first step is to create um, two one by one by six bars going this way like this. Want to create two of those together and uh, we're gonna start off with the right side so we can see we have pieces right here that are already good. We need to find this piece, this piece, and this piece. So I can go ahead and look around the puzzle for a piece like that. Maybe this one can go here. All right, we have that puzzle right, that piece right there. This piece can go right there too. Um, these two pieces do not fit together. I was wrong. Um, so in the beginning, there are a lot, a lot of scattered pieces around the puzzle. So it's going to be a little difficult for you at first to find the right puzzle that you're looking for. But once you find it, the more the more pieces that you solve, the more easier it is to find the the pieces that you can't find, the missing pieces. I'm piece already, we have this piece right here that's um, solved. And next we're gonna do this one right here. So we would look around the puzzle again. You wanna keep the white or the black side to the left. That way you don't mess up any of your work and you wanna build the bar right here in any of these four steps. You don't wanna do it here, you wanna do it either in any of these four. That way you have more space to work with and more pieces to have more access to. So we're gonna start off with looking for this bar right here in the third layer because it's in the very center. And uh, I realized that this um, this tutorial is going a little bit more fast paced than a normal tutorial. And that is because essentially if you know how to solve a, um, a seven by seven and a six by six, this should be standard. Um, this should be pretty easy for anybody who wants to solve it because it's essentially just applying the same steps, just more bigger. It'll just take more time to do. You, you basically build a bar in every single space right here, a one by six bar. Make sure that it's uh, one by one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you would just insert it into here. Uh, let's go over some cases that you would have some miscontrols over if you were to solve it. So once we solve the black side or the white side, you go ahead and go to the yellow side, which is gonna be the opposite of white. And for here, you would just apply the same concept, only this time, when you build a uh, piece right here, uh, or a bar, and you have the white side here and the opposite sides right here, to insert it, you want to um, first pull it up, and then you would do a U2, and push this side back down. That way, when this is here, this can be here, and none of your work has been um, destroyed. So our um, our V cube, Two centers are done right here and done right here. And now I'm going to go over the four centers that we... So there are four centers in the um, Rubik's Cube. There are four centers that we have to solve. And because there are four centers that we have to solve, we have to know what the color scheme is. So here it is. Red, followed by green, followed by orange, followed by blue. So... That is essentially it, it's red, green, orange, blue. And you just follow that order. So we're gonna start off with red since uh, I said it first. So we'll start off with red, go ahead and start off by making the center. This time we are holding the 
white or black side to the left and the yellow side needs to be facing to the right and that way we have more space to work with and we don't damage any progress so we'll start off by solving your red and your green sides and we will work on last two centers. Now, as I said before, there are moments where we have the uh, red solved and uh, we wanna insert a piece to go here. We would usually go there. Uh, that's not the way to do it. Remember, you align two bars together. You push that down, do a U2 and push it in an empty space. That way you can keep doing that and you would insert it that way, the way we did with um, uh, when we were trying to solve for yellow and the white was solved so that's what you want to do because the more um centers that we solve the more uh less space we have to work with so it's essential that you are efficient when you know how to insert a bar into each phase okay so we have solved our green and our red side and uh, we so far we have four centers solved not bad uh four out of six now we only have left our um last two centers and a, a quick way that I like to go ahead and avoid a lot of the pieces that are scattered everywhere on here is to go ahead and build um, uh, a big giant square in the middle that way we only have to work on the outer layer and to do that you can see that we have a, a case like this so when we have like a case like this and it's um, like cross diagonal and that part's cross diagonal you would do an R U R prime and that would turn it into like a three cross and it'll be also a three cross. Then you would align um, these corners together and then you would do another R, U, R prime to turn them into bars. And um, you align blue with blue, orange with orange, and then you do an R, U to R prime to go ahead and get the center color. So after that, um, we are going to go ahead and go with the next step right here, which is building this little square right here. I have shown how to do this in my six by six tutorial when we were trying to build off different pieces. But as you can see, there's a blue corner right here, and this is a three bar. If we put this blue corner like this, we're gonna get a nice solid bar right there. And if we see, we have another bar right here. So to go ahead and make this more efficient, you would put blue with blue. You would do a, uh, an F2, because the blue side's facing, and then you would do um, an R. As you can see, a lot of more blue pieces are here. Now this is our last section right here. So there's not that many pieces right there, so we're just gonna have to stick to contouring. But on this outer side, I see a lot of this blue here, and there is a lot of blue here, there isn't that much blue here, so if I put it in, it won't really affect anything, so I was doing R prime F2 R, and there's a lot more blue pieces now. So now there's less for us to work with, so it's essentially doing that same method many times, so that there's less of these pieces to work with, but for the pieces we do need to work with, um, we'll start off with building the inside square, so we can go ahead and focus on that piece. It looks like this piece goes down to this piece, you can tell because if you were to turn it, it will go like that. So to do a contour, um, essentially what this is, is that it's a specific algorithm that makes the um, piece move and nothing else is changed, so none of our progress is destroyed. So since we're doing that piece, we'll obviously make it go down to blue. Uh, so when that piece goes there, um, you go ahead and since I did it with this hand, I would do it with this hand. That way, move this down also. Do the opposite of what we did. Move that back up. Move this piece back up. And we have solved for that piece. And it's just that thing all over again. This piece goes here. Since I did it with this hand, I would use this finger to turn it that way. Move this also down. Move this in the opposite direction as before. Move this piece up and move this piece up also. So I'll show it one more time. This piece can go in here. Since I did it with this hand, this hand does an F. Put that down also. Reverse what you just did. Push it up. Push this up. And it just keeps building more and more blue pieces. And that's essentially what we're trying to do. Is that we want to make more pieces blue. So that more, more pieces can be used. For more future reference. So now we are done solving that part right there. 
uh, it was a little bit complicated stuff right there it's just a very long process and if you guys have any questions with anything go ahead and leave it down in the comments I'll be happy to help you out because I do admit that sometimes it can be a little bit confusing the more pieces you have in the middle the more harder it is to do contours and which direction goes where there's a lot more pieces to be complicated with but now that we're done with all centers we're going to the next step and that is building our edges eight of them we're going to be going to building eight edges and then we're going to go to the last four edges and then it's essentially three by three stage after that and then we'll be done with solving the puzzle so yeah now that we're finally done with our uh, all of our edges we are finally able to move on to last four edges so basically okay so this one's solved that's pretty good um, so basically you have uh, you want to solve first um, these two uh, edges these two by one edges and then you'll work up to to a um, these two edges right here and then you would finally work up to these edges right here and uh, it's actually going from middle to that way to that way and so we're going to start off with the centers so let's go ahead and start off with that um so it looks like this is solved this is solved and this is solved so we already have a parity so we want to switch it by performing the same algorithm as before um switch them so that they're opposite of each other and we're going to perform the algorithm as shown And that's going to solve these two together. And now all these edges are solved. So let's go ahead and go on to the next stage, which is going to these two. So you would just treat them as normal edges and solve for them. So if you get parity for uh, these two, then you would use the same algorithm as before, except this time you're gonna be gripping only up to here. Last time we gripped it all the way to the center, but this time we only gripped it over here. We leave these centers alone. So you just grip it to one, two, three, to so there. And if you got edge parity on this phase right here, then you would just grab it right here and do the algorithm. Trying not to touch the edges that you already solved for. So once you're done with that, we'll go on and move on to the next step. So when we are done with everything, we're done with centers, all edges have been solved. You have now reached the final part of solving the 8x8 and that is solving it like a 3x3. So here's how it breaks down. This is one big center. This is one edge. This is one corner. This is a big edge and this is another corner so it's one two three by one two three so if you guys know how to solve a three by three go ahead and solve it like a three by three if you don't know how to solve a three by three go ahead and check out my three by three tutorial for beginners i'll be having a sort of intermediate slash um advanced method coming soon since um i'm not i'm not obviously advanced but i am i think i'm intermediate i would claim myself as intermediate so then i will go ahead and give you guys a tutorial on that one but let's go ahead and solve it like a three by three now so along with this being an even layer puzzle it was obvious that there was going to be this coming out we have OLL parity and that is basically when this edge is supposed to be flipped, but it is not because this is an evil layer puzzle, so a paradox can occur, and I happen to have it. So if you guys have it, go ahead and follow the algorithm as shown right now to solve it. So this is how you perform an OLL parity algorithm for the 8x8. And that's how you solve OLL parity. So one more thing that you want to go ahead and make sure that you do is that when you have a um, when you have uh, OLL PLL parity, and to do PLL, here we go. So I hope I helped you guys solve your 8x8 Rubik's Cube, and if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a like, and uh, yeah, leave any questions you have on solving the 8x8, and I'll see you all in my next video. Peace out, guys.